This exhibition introduces Love's First Dream by Edward Russell Thaxter and the story of American sculpture's lost rebirth. Thaxter was born in 1857 to a prosperous merchant family in Yarmouth, Maine. He showed early talent as a sculptor, despite having nothing to carve but potatoes and chair legs. Back then, Yarmouth was no place for a burgeoning artist. His future advocate, James Jackson Jarvis, an American writer, critic, and pioneering collector of early Italian paintings, said, A more barren, uncongenial art atmosphere than that of an old-fashioned New England village we cannot imagine. So, Thaxter was sent to fashionable Boston to learn the basics of modeling clay and carving stone, and how to run a sculptor's workshop. Soon, he was back in Maine, making portrait busts in marble for the citizens of Portland. But, in October 1878, aged 21, the ambitious young sculptor boarded a ship for Europe to advance his career. His destination was Florence, cradle of the Italian Renaissance. In January 1879, he wrote home to his sweetheart, Lila Small. I am now so happy, as anyone can be who is a sculptor. This is the place for an artist. Florence was a center for making sculpture at that time, just as it had been for centuries. There, Thaxter took a studio close to the famous church of Santa Maria Novella and began work in earnest. A year later, he wrote to his mother about a new work, Love's First Dream. Did I ever tell you how the subject came into my head? Well, I was at Rome one night. It was dark and rainy and we were sitting by the fire. And as I felt in a thinking mood, I moved away into a dark corner and was in five minutes lost to all worldly things. I don't mean that I fell asleep, but I fell to thinking. What should I make when I get back to Florence? As I mused, I could see just as plainly as I can see this paper, a dream of love. At first, the beautiful vision was very dim, but grew brighter and brighter until it stood before me, just as it stands before me today in the studio. While it was fresh in my mind, I went to my room and drew the whole group, just as I saw it in my mind, on a piece of paper. This drawing I kept in my pocket until I got to my studio. I then went and had my frame made in less than 10 days. Everyone said it was beautiful. By the time he finished the clay model, it stood 10 feet high. In October 1879, James Jackson Jarvis visited Thaxter's studio for the first time. Jarvis was usually critical of American art, but was entranced by Love's First Dream. He immediately published a breathless description in the New York Times. A young maiden, just budding into perfect womanhood of sweetest, pensive beauty, with closed, dreamy eyes and limbs relaxed in gentle, half-conscious slumber, Visions of undefinable happiness, thrilling and giving indescribable, languid, not voluptuous, grace of sinuous life to her body and limbs is seen rising from a bed of roses and flowers, some of which still cling to her limbs, reluctant to let her go. Thaxter had achieved something daring and new for an American sculptor. He abandoned the neoclassical style preferred by older American artists in Italy, like Hiram Powers or Harriet Hosmer, and instead took inspiration from Italian Baroque and contemporary Italian sculpture. He also represented a modern woman experiencing love and desire in a langorious pose, rather than the conventional, classicizing female figure. It was quite unexpected from a young New Englander. Certainly, nothing like it had ever been seen in Yarmouth. Jarvis enthusiastically proclaimed the beginning of a rebirth in American sculpture, and he urged someone to commission it in marble. 
Whoever secures it, if the cutting correspond to the perfection of the modeling, will secure a masterpiece of American sculpture, and by far the finest ideal statue that has ever gone to America. Beyond in exquisite conception and treatment anything I know of modern European sculpture, what Thaxter may succeed in doing in the maturity of his powers and experience remains to be seen. But fate intervened. On April 23rd, 1881, the New York Sun reported alarming news. Mr. Thaxter, the young American sculptor who has so distinguished himself in Florence, is lying dangerously ill in that city. In early May, he wrote his last letter to his beloved Lila, back in Maine. My dear Lila, I should have written you before this. Had I not been sick with typhoid fever, I tell you, Lila, I was truly sick and came, don't tell anyone, for I don't want mother to know, pretty near, pegging out. You must have heard of my sickness before this, and I don't see why you have not sent me a line. Now, Lila, please, write soon. Doctors advised a return to Maine to recuperate, but he died on Wednesday, June 29th, 1881, in Naples, while waiting for a boat home, aged just 24. Jarvis told the readers of the New York Times. He had ordered the marble for his exquisite group of Love's First Dream. On this last piece, Mr. Thaxter's reputation must rest. This is a composition of so much original treatment and graceful poetical fancy as to deserve to be perpetuated in marble, even if for the credit of American sculpture alone. Jarvis worked hard to keep Thaxter's dream alive. In April 1883, a half-size marble version was unveiled in Thaxter's old studio in Florence. It was made by Italian stonecutters under the direction of William Green Turner, a prominent sculptor from Rhode Island living in Florence. A photograph of the finished marble was taken before it was shipped to America. By September 1883, it was shown in a major exhibition in Boston that Jarvis helped to organize, highlighting what were called foreign products, art, and manufactures. Since Thaxter's marble was carved in Florence by Italian craftsmen, Jarvis included it as a foreign work of art within the sculpture section, while the painting section included new work by avant-garde French artists like Edouard Manet and Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Love's First Dream was the only piece of sculpture illustrated in the catalogue, with a print made directly from the photograph. Jarvis must have ensured the photograph was made so the engraver could have a print ready for the Boston catalogue before the sculpture reached America. Over 300,000 visitors attended the fair before it closed in January 1884, and Thaxter won a posthumous gold medal for his work. But it was his last and only masterpiece. He lies buried in the Protestant cemetery in Florence, among other Americans who went to Italy and never made it home.